with regard to offline applications, there were several improvements. Firstly, more things and functions are generated on the device. Bear in mind that online applications have a large part of the processing done in the server. If I have a panel that shows a list of products, we have a data provider, a procedure, a service that has been brought into the device, and through the metadata, the device shows this information. But uh, the, all the procedures happen in the server and the generations were Java or .NET. When the application is offline, all those procedures, data providers, business components are run on the device itself. And this is transparent for you because by changing the property, GeneXus determines this application is offline and I'm going to generate everything in the device itself. So the components, the data providers, etc., are generated with the generators of the device either Swift for iOS or Java for Android. We had some limitations, though, with regard to functions and methods and resources that we could easily generate in the web in the past, but not in the devices. So we started to see what was required for the smart devices, for example. The expression data type was not supported. In offline generators in the past, and now we wanted to have generators. Many functions and functionalities that were not there in the past. Security has also been improved in the offline application. While in the past we were invoking the server, we had a lot of communication with the server all the time to make calculations and bring in the data, but now everything happens in the device and the interaction with the server happens through the synchronization service. So basically it's the only entry point with the server, which is the one that sends and receives the data from the server. We have improved the security of these uh, services and then, then there is a new property in order to encrypt the database offline. There are some scenarios of applications, especially those for the banking sector, that require an encrypted database so that only the application can have access to this uh, information. So this is an additional property in order to encrypt the database offline. And then the support for multiple offline applications in the same KB. That's a limitation we had with regard to the scope. We could have only one offline application in the past, but now we can have uh, several in the same database. And finally, the syn synchronization by timestamp. In order to understand the reason for this last uh, feature, I would like to go over the synchronization in general, especially the part of the receive. The new thing is synchronization by timestamp, but I would like to go over all this in order to explain a little about uh, the reasons for this uh, new feature. When we have an offline application, there is a property called synchronization receive granularity criteria, which means that when the synchronization is done and the data came, the data data come from the server to the device, the property has two possibilities of synchronization: doing it by table or by row. And by row, it could be done by hash. And now we have added the new property. So by row, we use timestamp. What does it mean that it's by table? In this case, when the synchronization is by table, what happens is that we create an application which is offline and GeneXus determines on the basis of this offline main what are the tables it needs so that this application 
functions without connection. So it creates a database with the tables that are required for this application. Now, in this case, any change made in the server in one of those tables that participate in the application, when the data are received by GenX, GenX sees the changes, erases the content of the table, and brings in the new data. So it's a most simple algorithm. There's not so much complexity behind it. It detects where there were changes in the last table with regard to the last synchronization of that device, erases everything and brings in the data again. And this can be useful if the tables are small. Or most of the data in this table change because erasing everything and uh, loading everything again won't be a problem. It could be an application for internal use of a company. Let's say that the salespeople have a list of clients to visit and they want to have it offline, so have access to this information, no matter what the connectivity is. Um, the list changes every day. Today I have a list of clients and tomorrow the list will be completely different. So it's a good option because it can erase all of the data and uh, put the new data again. What is the problem with this option? That the table is very big. If the number of registers I'm going to use in this offline application is very big, then we have a significant data traffic. And when the application is not so much for internal use, but for the public in, general, public in general, and it's going to be in the stores, and many users can be using the application, this application, if I have to download all of the data each time the user is going to synchronize, maybe the experience is not so good, so maybe it's not the best option. And here comes the second option, which is synchronization by row. Up to now, we have been using the hash concept. The synchronization by row Instead of sending all of the content of the table every time there is a change in the server, can send, send only the changes, the inserts, updates, or deletes that happen in the server. So this is going to improve remarkably the traffic of data, because now if I have a table of clients and in the server there has been a change in the name or the address, or or the phone number of one of the clients, it's only this row that is going to be sent. So it's a, a big improvement with regard in, in the traffic of data. We have to consider the scenarios, but if the connectivity is not so good, or it's an application for the public at large, then this option may be better than the other one. It, this is the default option, actually, when we create an offline application. What does it add? We have improved the data traffic, but we have more processing in the server to detect what it has to send to each one of the devices. Uh, this is uh, solved automatically by GenXus. It creates a set of tables in the database, in the main data store, that is to say the server, and it creates three additional tables. I think that now it's four if I'm not mistaken, because I believe that now we have created a fourth one, but these are the most relevant ones. And in these tables, the state of synchronization of each one of the devices is going to be maintained. This means knowing that when a certain device is asking for a receive, that is to say wants to update the data, is going to send a hash and when it was uploaded for the first time the sentence was executed. Let's say that here I have a list of clients and when I'm loading is active clients. My synchronization process brings active clients. 
So I have a set of clients and information was kept here when the information was loaded and it created a hash with a select. This was stored in the device. When it asks for the synchronization, it sends the hash to the server. The, the query is done again. And it creates a hash with the results of that uh, question. So it's going to compare the result, got to compare to see whether there are any differences. If uh, there are no differences, the table has not changed. But if there are differences, it's going to compare the hashes of each record that are kept in the auxiliary tables for that device to see which are the registers that have to be sent. What are the differences? If there is a hash for a register that is different, it means that the register was updated and it has to be sent to the device. If there's a new hash, it means there is a new register which fulfills the loading conditions of the device and uh, there may have been a little also if we see that the hash is no longer there. So there's additional processing from the server. I will probably going to need more storage. in order to keep the information about uh, the updating of this device or the synchronization. Uh, everything is documented in the wiki, but uh, I hope that you have understood in general lines how it works. Now, where could the problem be with this algorithm or synchronization method? When the device needs a lot of data, I have a big table and I want everything to be in the device. For that offline table, let's say that it's an application that has all the list of products in the device, and I have thousands or dozens of thousands of products. And maybe there are many users that are using this application, and uh, synchronization has to be made not once a week, but uh, every now and then the information has to be updated. If I have a table with many registers in the device, the first synchronization option of synchronization by table is not the best one because it's going to erase all the information in the table, and that's very bad with regard to the traffic of data. And the synchronization by hash that is to say by register using the hash, is going to bring only the records that were updated. That imagine a table with 8,000 products and only two were updated in the server that were updated from another device or from the back end, let's say the price of two products. In order to synchronize, there will be information only on the two products that were Changed, but the hash algorithm has uh, detected a change and it has to erase everything to find out which ones were updated. So, if there are many and the table is very big and I have many devices that are synchronizing, this can have a very significant load from the side of the server. That's where we get to the property in the new version. All this was already in the previous one, which is the synchronization. Um, by time stamp. This says, well, uh, I don't want it to do it by hash. I want it to be for time stamp. So uh, the device is going to send the time of the last sync, of the latest sync, and there are going to be some um, additional uh, devices. Very little thing, but uh, anyway. We have to add a couple of attributes to the tables, and that's the date of the latest uh, modification and whether it's deleted um, or not. And so there are some attributes that uh, indicate that it was deleted, and what's the attribute that uh, indicates that it was updated. So we're going to include them there. And we have to include a couple of instruments and configure this uh, property with these attributes. Whenever we update one of those uh, registers of the transaction, we have to update that attribute. We have to add a rule, um, 
updating the timestamp. This is a simple rule and say, well, when, whenever it is updated, it, we can't physically erase it. We have to do a logical erase. Because otherwise uh, it, it won't be there. And uh, so this requires a certain configuration in, uh, <laughs> Before, you didn't have to do anything. Now you have to add those options. So whenever a device is asking for a sync for that table, what the um, algorithm in the server will do is that for this table that I'm being asked, this synchronization for this device, what are the devices that changed since then? And so the table of products that I mentioned earlier is going to say, well, it's just these two uh, since then, so you don't have to process that much, you see. To, to, to know which ones ch have changed. So it improves uh, traffic of data and the processing from the server side. Uh, so that's at the level of transaction, right? What I'm saying here is that you have to take into account that if you make a logic erase, everything that you have implemented so far uh, when you make a physical erase, you'll have to change it. Well, yes. Well, p perhaps the, the scope is quite uh, uh, concentrated here in this tr transaction, but I don't know. Let's suppose that any pattern, it will have to take into account that uh, it's the logical erase. The, yes. Well, uh, you will have to try and keep it at the rules level so that if updates are done through business components, then they should take this into account. But if you need an additional work, and that's why the recommendation that I can make here is that to leave this option uh, by hash, uh, and that's by defect, and uh, if you see any difficulties, for instance, it depends on the content of the tables and we're going to see other consider considerations, but uh, depending on how the tables are, if there is a lot of content from the device, it, the table of products may be enormous, but if in the device I'm not taking all the data, well, that's not a problem, because the problem is the record set that must be sent to the device. When 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 I say is... is uh, going all over the table, it's only going to be sweeping the registers that were sync. And let me go deeper into that in a minute. Um, of course, the, 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 the idea is to leave it by default with hash. And if you see that there is any particular uh, table that has a particular low with an, because of the number of devices or considerations, then you will have to consider the possibility of implementing this option. Well, it would be good if patterns also have this into account. For instance, when you are setting these two properties, the pattern should realize and uh, uh, find all the registers. Well, I think that we can make improvements here, and uh, if we configure um, this, this uh, you can add the rules automatically and how these objects are, are being updated, and changes um, are made. Anyway, these are very specific scenarios, but... Uh, uh, the property to to select uh, by, with hash is at the level of database. No, it's by row. Uh, the property is by row. And what the term is, whether you're going to be using the time stand, is this. If I configure uh, these properties, then it starts using the time stamp. Any other question? Any doubts, questions? Let me now take into account, and I'm always talking about the receive. I haven't uh, mentioned the send because I, I think that that's uh, what's really important to understand how it works. And what I said just now is that it's important that our offline applications uh, only include 
the minimum necessary data, that is the, ne the minimum necessary group of tables. Minimum of records. So I've brought about this example that you are using in the practice uh, part of the class, which is the local, um, the system of the local government or municipalities. And you have the entities, that you have uh, the users, you have the claims, uh, whether the uh, types of um, uh, traffic signals and so on, uh, you probably reservations. So on. you've probably seen this in the practice course. Let's suppose that you want to make an offline modification, and the only thing you want to, them to, wanted to do, and this is a clear example, so that users can report a claim, can file a claim, just that. So uh, he's driving. And, and, and he sees something that, uh, like, uh, you know, a uh, traffic signal that is not working well or a tree has fallen. And it's offline because in the place where the user was, there is no connectivity. And uh, I want, he wants it to keep it offline and uh, it will be sent when the user comes online. So what we would do is to have a main in a smart device and we say, and the only object, and you'll see it in the practice course, is this user complaint to insert a complaint. It's only inserting a register on the complaint table, which is this one here. Now, if I create that main, that main object, which is only uh, making an insert, um, smart device, a business component, whatever you use, GeneXus will determine that for that offline uh, app, you need these tables. I don't know if you can see it from there. These four tables. The complaint table, because... I am going to insert a record there. And then I need the data from this table, because if I'm going to insert a complaint, I need uh, the types of traffic signals. I need uh, the, the reason for the complaint. They are the foreign keys of this table, the extended table. And so Janessa would say, for this offline application, I only need these tables, and I don't need all these others. So it's important to analyze the impact, to make an impact analysis of this. Now, when when we, when we make an offline, I think Janessa would uh, show you a list of the tables that will be um, created or that would be used. And this is important because if you add a table, because GenXus understood that there was an, another table that was necessary, or you called an object and you didn't know that it was another table that is not necessary for the reality of this app, for instance, I don't know, reservations. So all the sync algorithms that I mentioned, that they are comparing whether there are any changes or not, are going to be analyzing other tables that perhaps are not interesting or, or shouldn't be analyzed. So that's why it's important that you resort only to the necessary tables. Now, when I said in the KB of the course um, to define this object, to use a complaint, and I looked at the impact analysis, I, I didn't have any problem. It, it only added two tables, which is the reservations and uh, the um, user car, because when inserting a complaint, the panel, I had defined uh, um, a table, a table in the C user. Now, since there was that Bitcoin, when closing the train, the, 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 the close tree, he said, I need a business component user. And so it goes, and, and so in the go with user called with, to these two tables, to show uh, the cars and the reservation. So this means that the offline will create these tables and will upload the sync algorithms when, in fact, I don't need them at all. So that's why it's important to analyze because it's happened that uh, we've been reported problems of timeout in uh, syncs or important delays or errors, and this is because you're using tables that were necessary at that time. That's the first thing. The second thing is not the tables, but it's also the records that um, I'll need in my offline um, app. I won't need all of them. You know, when, when we make the build, um, 
we are, are having the navigation of the offline object. And what you see there is how the loading procedure will be. That is, what is the data that the server will bring up to the um, device? It will go all along the complaint table and uh, the same thing for the user. D don't you see that there is something weird there? Well, the purpose was to insert an, a user's complaint, just that. Now, it's bringing in all users to the device. All the users on the server are going to the device. I don't need them at all. It's loading all the complaints made by all users. I don't need that. I just want to insert one new complaint. So once again, why is this important? How, how can we solve this, first of all? Well, the offline object, we can uh, include conditions. And in this example, I clearly have to add uh, the condition user identification, obtain the user that's been logged uh, in or the ID that's positive, or we can determine whether the user has a login or any identification of the device, and we could have that in the session. We would add this condition. This means that the uh, uh, proload would uh, bring in only one user and not uh, a thousand users that may be using this app, and it will bring in only the complaints I've made. And I could put a, a condition that uh, it shouldn't bring any complaints. I don't want to have a look at my previous complaints, but minimum bringing complaints in case I wanted to see the, the complaints I've made earlier. I've added only that condition and so when uh, Genexus is navigating offline, it would look at all the navigations where I can apply that condition. Obviously, the user table will be used because that's the primary one. And on the complaint table, it's like a foreign key, and I'm going to use it. But if it's extended, Genexus will apply it. So uh, you're going to see fewer data. And that's very, very important because, once again, when I said earlier that synchronization is looking at all the changes made, you know, the synchronization by hash, it's not of all the registers in the on the server, but those that were synced. So if I changed, I don't know, any data of the complaint of another user, the, the sync algorithm is, is not interested. It's not even going to check. Now, when the table change, it's going to look if there were any changes in the complaints of these users. Now, in the previous case, when you had those other two tables, how can you eliminate them or delete them from the sink? Well, in the case I've mentioned, in fact, what I did there was to uh, delete that business component variable because I didn't need it. So I solve it with a for each, and since it's not no longer called uh, for each, then it's not calling it. It's that in the procedure you made. Well, the problem lied with the panel in the SD panel because it showed, you know, to make the insert of the complaint, it would be asking me the, the what the complaint was, or the user, the reason. And there was something based on the user. So I identified it because I could see that there were some extra tables. And so I looked for the cross-reference, the cross-reference of this object. And I said, well, how did it get there? And it's because of this transaction. And why is this transaction adding this? Well, and, and you can see it. And you can't edit it. No, you can't. Well, if there are any cases where you can't take it because... I don't know, GenNexus is adding a relation and you can't uh, take it away. In the part of conditions, you can add, for instance, it's adding a table of reservations and I can't take it away because there is a call tree and to cut it out, it's difficult. Then I would put a condition, the primary condition key is when the reservation is less than zero. I know, but you know, I know it's never going to take part in the synchronization process very well. So to conclude, please revise, please check the offline database report.
that uh, there are only the minimum time between receives, if it's by hash or by time stand, and then the minimum time between receives, that's also an important data. If there are many devices that are being synchronized and the uh, number of data, you have to see whether you have to do this very uh, frequently or not.